Good morning, ladies. Um, today we're going to talk about something very, very serious. Um, it's something that I battle with all the time, and um, pretty much everybody I know does. Some of them don't know they're dealing with it, but um, and it's, I'm going to talk about a spirit of fear. And I know we've talked about it before, um, but I, it, it just causes so much torment in my life and the people that I love. And I just want to talk a little bit more about it. So um, just some thoughts that I had, you know, it really is a choice um, what we believe. I remember there's a song we used to sing, um, whose report are you going to believe? And when you realize that these thoughts of fear and these it, that actually cause feelings and fear, a spirit of fear can actually cause physical feelings, physical symptoms. That's where high blood pressure comes from. And if your stress and anxiety um, syndromes, they, it's a spirit of fear that's behind it. I remember after losing two babies at 17 weeks, um, <clears throat> you know, I was terrified that it was going to happen again. And I was going to a Bible believing devil casting out, you know, type of church, but I was bound by a spirit of fear. And there were times during that pregnancy that I would go sit on the deck and I would just shake for fear that this baby inside of me was going to die. And, um, I physically felt the fear. Okay. So fear isn't just some thought out there. Um, it's a, it's a spirit and, um, we can become bound by it and controlled by it. And like I said, it'll manifest physically in your body, whether it be feelings that just seem incredibly logical to have. Um, I mean, it makes sense, right? If you, um, are watching your husband die of cancer, um, of course it seems natural to, to be afraid to be alone or fear he's going to die or whatever. So I'm not saying that it doesn't make sense to the mind, but when we become consumed by it, um, and can't go on and there's a spirit of oppression that comes with, um, a spirit of fear. And so I just want to talk a little bit about it <coughs> and I want excuse me, I want us to understand that it's, it's a choice to believe it. Yes. What I see and feel seems very natural, but um, God doesn't call us to live by our feelings and by what we see. He calls us to live by faith and faith in the word of God. And so what I see in front of me gives me good cause to be afraid. But the truth says something completely different. The truth says that God will supply all of my needs according to his glory and riches by Christ Jesus. You know, God says he will never leave me nor forsake me. He provides for all of my needs. You know, whatever your fear is, um, I can I can assure you there is a truth to counter the lie that you're believing. And um, those feelings and thoughts really are lies because the truth says something completely different. Again, I'm not saying it doesn't feel a certain way and, and the circumstances don't look a certain way, but the truth is, God knows God is your father and God will provide for all of your needs. Um, and I was just thinking of some of the, um, you know, we've talked about this before about how our thoughts and our feelings come from three different places. Okay. Our thoughts come by the Holy spirit. They come from the enemy and they come from what we know and what we have seen in the world. Um, and we need to be discerners of our thoughts. We need to know where these thoughts are coming from. And like I said, they seem logical, okay? They seem natural, but we're, we're not to live by our natural selves or to live by the spirit. Um, and so I was just thinking of some, you know, some fears. We're afraid of what the future is going to bring or losing someone or losing our home or our job or what we perceive as our safety net. Um, which is such an illusion because anything could change in a second. You know, the, the things we put our hope in when my husband has a good job or I have a good home, all of these things could be gone in an instant. So it's an illusion what we even put our hope in. Um, you know, a child or, or our children not walking with the Lord, maybe dying without knowing Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, fear, we're going to blow it again. And let me just give you a little reality check on fear of failure. You're going to fail. I'm going to fail again over and over and over again. And the sooner we can accept the fact that we're going to fail and we're still loved, um, the, the greater the peace of mind we'll have. Um, you know, fear will never change. Um, fear will never see what we're hoping for. You know, the, that thing that you're praying for and have been praying for years, you're afraid we're never going to see it. It's never going to change. Um, 
fear I'll have no one to take care of me. Uh, this has been a huge battle in my life. Um, I, I do walk in some victory in it now, but there were times I was terrified. I love Brian so much and our marriage is so amazing. I'm terrified or I have been terrified that um, I'd lose him, you know, which I, one of us will die eventually, you know, but um, I, I understand that fear. It was a huge struggle of mine. Um, and again, I'm not saying that these things don't seem to make sense or logical, um, but they're just the facts that we see, okay? God's word is truth. I think of the people of old, you know, in the Bible, Abraham being told he was going to be the father of many nations. He didn't see it. He didn't know, you know, he didn't see it in front of him. He had to believe um, over and over and over again. It was by faith, okay? So we can make the choice. Um, to believe the truth. <clears throat> um, you know, the truth is that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Okay. Like I said, you find, you find the truths that counteract your lie that you hear in your head. Um, but when I stay here in this fear and doubt, you know, when I, when I have a thought that is <coughs> clearly not truth, that it is the enemy or it's, it's a natural thing that I see in front of me. You know, I have a choice. I have a choice to meditate on that and let that come in and begin to control me or I can stop it in its tracks and say, no, I will not believe this. I will not allow my feelings to go down this road. Um, and oftentimes, if you're anything like me, I let it in. I let I meditate on it days and days later. It becomes a part of how I think. And you know what? What happens after months and years of believing like this Um your whole thought process, it, it gets processed through this fear. Um, you know, and I talk about, uh, removing the enemy in the name of the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus, you know, sometimes the enemy is long gone. He's just trained us how to think. Um, but so I, I want you to, to maybe recognize, you know, where these fears are in your life and what is the truth and what are you going to do about it? You have a choice. Okay. Um, you know, the feeling of not being taken care of or being alone. The fact of the matter is, is you are not alone and you are being taken care of. You don't believe it and you don't see it. Um, but you have a choice to believe it. So you can continue to live in this misery of, oh, I don't feel taken care of, or I'm not going to be provided for, um, which is a lie. And it causes all of these terrifying feelings of emotions and anxiety and it's not true because you already are being taken care of. You can sit in that and be miserable or you can choose to believe the truth. Um, it may not change your feelings right away, but you know, there are times like I literally have to grab my face and say, no, I will not believe that that is not true. And it, sometimes it takes a long time for those feelings to line up with it. Okay. Especially when what you see in front of you isn't changing <coughs> excuse me so you know it might take a lot of um taking those thoughts captive and you know what we need to take our feelings captive okay our feelings are part of our emotions and just kind of naturally what we see and i'm a feeler i'm an emotional person i have lived by my feelings for years but god wants to grow, wants us to grow up and live by faith faith in his word um so i ask you whose report are you going to believe are you going to believe what you see and what you feel and that, that anxiety in your heart um, and that shakiness and, and just those emotions? Are you going to, are you going to believe that? Are you going to live in that? Or are you going to draw a line in the sand and say, no more, I am not going to listen to that. I'm going to believe God's word. And you know, it might take some repentance. You might need to get before God and list every single fear you've had and repent of each and every one of them. You know, I repent, Lord, for the fear of failure. I repent for fear that you're not going to take care of me. Um, list them all. Um, take responsibility for listening to them. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know what? Tell that spirit of fear to go in the name of Jesus. Okay, it has no place there. And I'm not saying that once you do that, it's going to be easy. You're going to have to take those thoughts captive over and over and over again. Um, so I'm running out of space here on this video, but I just, I just want to get this talk 
going about fear because I see it all around me. I see it in my own life. I see it in my family. And, and ladies, we can't, we can't live like this. Okay. We need to live by faith and by truth and not by our feelings and our emotions and these fears that consume us and take us down. So um, kind of a serious, sober message today. And I just really challenge you to take a look at what's going on inside your heart. It's not okay. It is not okay to be shaken for fear. It is not okay to have an upset stomach. It is not okay to have an ulcer. It is not okay to have high blood pressure because you're stressed over the things that are going on. That is not right. It is sin, ladies. We need to call it what it is. It is sin and we need to repent. Okay? So I love you. I hope you hear this message in love and I hope you know that it is my battle too. I battle it every day. Um, but we have victory. We have victory in Christ. Okay. He supplies for all of our needs, ladies. His grace is sufficient. All right. So cry out to him, get with him and repent, repent and begin to take these thoughts captive. All right. I love you.